Cavano, and I'm the executive director of the Ohio Latino Affairs Commission. Sure. Well, the most important goals for us is to engage our community with the um, leadership from the Obama administration and the federal government. As you know, our community organizations do a lot of work and they are very engaged locally, but sometimes the missing link is how does the uh, does this thing work with the federal government? You know, who is out there? What are some of the resources and information out there available that we may not know about? Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to create those uh, bonds of communication so that our Latino leadership is uh, empowered to do what they are already doing, but to do it in a more effective way. Uh, Jose Rico, and I'm the executive director of the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for Hispanics. So, you know, since the president's been into off, been in office, education has been a high priority for him. You know, not only does he believe that this is the only way in which we're going to be able to grow our economy, which this is a way in which we're going to be able to really address some of the challenges uh, that our country faces, it's also something that he knows from a personal experience is that this is a way in which we're going to be able to get our, our children out of poverty into a better life and be able to contribute in our democracy. So what the president set out about three years ago is a 2020 goal. And that goal is to once again be the most educated country in the world. It is part of our plan to be able to out-educate, out-innovate, and now build the rest of the country. So 20 years ago, we were number one in the world where over 60% of our adults had a college uh, degree. Uh, what ended up happening 20 years later, now we have less than 40% of our adults have a college degree, and the rest of the world has basically taken off in their educational percentage. What has happened is that those countries has, um, have invested significantly in making sure that more people get a college degree, and we have not. So what the president's agenda has been is to invest in education in three major areas to be able to get us there. And he also knows, given the census, that uh, right now we are the largest minority group in the country, that in the next 40 years, uh, our growth is going to be close to 70% in terms of the, our population. And that we know that even today, uh, over 25% over of our population in this country under the age of 18 is Latino. So if we need to make sure that these educational investments that the uh, president has implemented uh, really get to the Latino community. And this is one of the reasons that why we're here. And so very briefly, mm -hmm. so, you know, so the president has been very clear for his support for the DREAM Act uh, last year. Uh, we know that these are students that came here when they were very young, that many of them have been very successful in school, uh, see this country as their own, do not know any other country, and want to be able to contribute to the country that they know and love. Mm -hmm. And so the president, uh, last year, when we made the huge push to be able to get the DREAM Act passed, we were able to get the uh, DREAM Act passed in the House of Representatives and came five votes shy in, uh, in, the, with, in the Senate. Um, unfortunately, those five votes uh, were from Republican senators that had previously supported the DREAM Act. So the president has made it very clear that he does not uh, like the fact that politics are being played with the lives of these uh, students. Um, and he's, again, it's been looking for ways to be able to work in a bipartisan way to be able to pass not only the DREAM Act, because that's important for these individuals, but we know that the bigger solution is real comprehensive immigration reform.
So we also uh, approached, Marco and I that is, uh, we approached um, Representative Marcy Kepter um, this morning uh, who uh, had previously voted against the passing the DREAM Act when she was in the House in 2010, um, whereas um, her opponent in the March 6th primary, um, Dennis Kucinich, Representative Kucinich, voted uh, in favor of the DREAM Act. And so um, Marco approached Representative Kucinich this morning saying um, that um, I'm, I'm undocumented, essentially, and you know the Dream Act would would have affected me. Would have uh, I would have been a beneficiary of the Dream Act had it passed, and um, and, and so he asked her what her position would be um, if Captor. the Dream Act. Captor. Sorry, we asked. Um, yes, he asked um, Representative Captor mm -hmm. what her position would be um, if the Dream Act were to come up again um, in the next legislature, the next congressional session, and um, she she said that she favors comprehensive reform. Um, but that um, she would probably support the DREAM Act um, if it were to come up again. Um, but she would hope that it wouldn't be limited to, um, to just the DREAM Act, that she would also like to push for comprehensive reform. And so, um, you know, while we certainly, I, I certainly appreciate her, um, her willingness to, to take another look at that and maybe reconsider her vote, um, you know, I, I, I think that there was a missed opportunity um, in 2010 for her to really stand up and, 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 and be supportive of the DREAM Act. You know, the DREAM Act has enormous popularity among Latino voters, and uh, as someone who's going to represent um, a district that will have the highest number, a congressional district, that is, that will have the highest number of Latino voters in the state of Ohio, uh, certainly hope that she uh, will understand some of the issues that most affect uh, the Latino community um, in, in Ohio and nationally. Um, and so we certainly hope that she'll reconsider that um, if she's reelected. So it was interesting to see also that Representative Kucinich um, mm -hmm. gave very passionate remarks this morning um, in his introduction to, to today's uh, conference. Um, you know, he spoke very passionately about his vote um, uh, in favor of the DREAM Act. Uh, and it's something that I think he feels very, very um, close to his heart. Um, whereas I'm not sure I sense that same type of um, affection <laughs> from, um, from Representative Kaptur. It's certainly great to hear that the DREAM Act is becoming a very important topic uh, in this area and in, in this com new congressional district. Um, so it would be interesting to see how, how that uh, de continues to develop. Yeah, my name is Marco Saavedra. Okay, and you are from Cincinnati, correct? Yeah, correct. Cincinnati, Ohio. And you are a potential dreamer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the DREAM Act were to be enacted, I could follow. I would the uh, potential beneficiary from I just graduated from Canyon College about, well, in May 2011. So, like, you have a bachelor's degree in sociology. Yeah, and since then, I've been working in Cincinnati, Ohio, doing some organizing with the immigrant and faith communities down there, and just through through friends, was got word about the, the White House uh, summit here in Lorraine, um, or Illyria, wherever we are. Um, yeah, Illyria. Yeah, Illyria. Ohio. And just through like, you know, ongoing projects with Nick kind of was intrigued by it and was hoping that it could be a good place where we could make good connections, which has happened, and then also like maybe, I don't know, uh, hold the White House accountable to some of their policies and statements and, and back okay. and forth. And so, yeah. So you were telling me that you don't, that you, you question how like, like how, the effectivity how, yeah, of, how effective these forums are. Right, and it sounds like, I guess, maybe in the most, like, pessimistic sense, like, they might just be, like, a big PR um, gig for, like, to outreach to the Latino community, you know, we're in Ohio in an election year, and it's obviously a key state, and the Ohio population here is growing, so, like, it definitely needs to be reached out to, and so, obviously, we had congressional reps here, um, and so, part of that is there. And then also, but you wonder how effective it is, right? Because obviously there are legitimate concerns being voiced, if not by immigrants themselves, but um, by advocates or friends of the immigrant community, uh, particularly the undocumented immigrant community. And obviously we know that like immigration is such a big issue, and like 